Hello friends, Mandar here. I'm back with another video. Today we're going to talk about a wide variety of topics. I'll start with people who have been receiving their green cards. There are some common questions right after you get your green card, so I'm going to cover those. I'll also talk about prevailing wage, the, the longest process in the perm process and what are the timelines and what is the process. I'll talk about people who are on L1 visa and wanted to go on H1 to get the flexibility of job change. I'll also talk about my thoughts on EB3 and you might want to pay closer attention to what I'm going to say about EB3 and some other topics such as USCIS alerts in the recent times. So there is a lot of packed content in this video and I'm sure you'll have something to look forward to in this topic. So watch this video until the end and let's get started. If you are here for the first time, welcome. My name is Mandar and I make immigration related videos for US and Canada. I'm not an immigration lawyer, so anything that I say on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs, before you take any action, you should hire a competent immigration lawyer. Now as usual, just a reminder that there are sponsorship links in the description of this video. So if you buy any products through those links, the ch channel will get a little bit of a commission and that will support the channel. So I really appreciate you taking a look at it. Also, if you have any questions for me, do contact me on my Patreon site. I do give my personal opinions and personal thought what I would do if I were in your situation. Something that you would not get from your lawyers. So Patreon is the best way to contact me because emails may get lost in the pile of emails that I get on the daily basis. So see you there. Now happy Memorial Day and happy long weekend. I'm sure you must have some plan for the summer. I have my plans and I like to go around in the New England area. There are tons of places to visit within an hour or two of Boston, which is great because I haven't seen that in any other place in the United States. Every weekend we go somewhere and it is some place new and that's really refreshing. So this summer we have plans of getting out in and around Boston area and I really look forward to it. So put down in the comment section below what are your plans. Now let's look at today's first topic. Now a lot of people have been getting their green cards, especially from EB2 backlog countries. The reason is USCIS has declared that there are tons of EB2 uh, visa numbers available for this year. So a lot of people are also seeing their green cards getting processed, especially from 2009, 10, 11, 12 uh, time frame, uh, the priority date time frame. Now after you get your green card, there are certain obligations that you need to follow so that you don't lose your green card. Now I have a special video and you don't want to miss that video because I cover a lot of important points. What are the things that you should be careful about after you get your green card? So check that video out and I'll put a link somewhere on the screen up here. Now there is an important question that a lot of people ask me and I had this question during my process as well. The question is about job change. So because of the backlog and because of the long wait period of time, you have been with the current employer, however that current employer is, however low salary it is and however crappy your job is, you have stuck around with that employer for a long time until you got your green card. Now that you have got your green card, you, must, you may be thinking that, can I change my job immediately? And the answer is yes. The moment you get your green card, the moment it's approved, you are free to change your job. You are free to do anything else you want as long as it's legitimate. That is the whole point of green card. So some people think that there is a certain time frame that you need to wait uh, uh, with your current employer after you get your green card. See the, the valid point is you should have had a bona fide job offer, a real job offer from the sponsoring employer at the time of adjudication of your green card which you already had and you already had been working with that employer for a while so if that is the case there is no reason for you to stick around with that employer after you get your green card once you get your green card you can immediately change your job to something else there is no rule or no policy written anywhere on USCIS website that you must wait with your sponsoring employer for a certain duration after you get your green card there is no such thing you can change your job on day one 
on uh, on the day when you get your green card so i hope that clarifies it now another question is about the travel now we are so paranoid we are so careful and cautious throughout these years waiting for the green card that we have uh, we have questions about job changes and travel travel is another question that i get about green cards after you get your green card you you are free to travel outside of the united states just remember that your travel should be temporary because the mere fact that you got your green card means that you have selected united states as your primary residence address so don't go outside of the united states for an extended period of period of time by extended period of time i mean more than 6 months or a year if you do so then you might be putting yourself in trouble because you may uscis may deem your green card or your permanent residence status to be abandoned so as long as you are going for 2 weeks 3 weeks a month or two for a short visits outside of the united states there should be no problem absolutely and while coming back you show your green card and get in because you will be welcome back on your green card status back to the united states so that now let's talk about the prevailing wage determination now as you know the prevailing wage determination is a process that is required for lot of different categories of visa so say for instance h1b h1 h2b and also for the perm or labor certification which is for employment based second preference category or third preference which is eb2 and eb3 so this prevailing wage determination is required really what prevailing wage determination is for a particular job of particular skills the, the department of labor wants to know whether the sponsoring company has the capability to pay you the the, the salary that is prevailing for that job description within a geographical location so any particular job in a particular geographical location has a certain salary which is industry standard and uscis or sorry dol wants to make sure that the sponsoring employer for your h1b or your perm which is for uh, labor certification is capable of paying you that particular salary minimum or higher than the prevailing wage so that is what the prevailing wage determination is now this process is uh, typically the longest process within the perm application now the perm application as you know they also want to determine that that, that there are no other uh, americans that are qualified for this job and then and then uh, the employer needs to prove through a job job circulation the job posting waiting for 30 uh, 30 days to get applications waiting for another 30 days for cooling off period and then making an application for perm so this entire process of uh, prevailing wage determination can take up to 7 to 8 months or even up to 9 months and then actual adjudication or actual um, review or approval of the perm application can take about 2 months or so so in total it can take up to an year without any audit now the perm in itself can uh, can call for an audit a certain percentage of perm applications go through an audit so that could delay the process up to year and a half or even 2 years but uh, more or less it should take the perm process should take anywhere between 7 to 8 months to up to an year no there is no expedited method for perm application unfortunately the expedited method which is the uh, premium processing is only available for i140 and h1b and so on so as of now there is no premium processing for perm application this is very common question that i always get and that's why i thought i would clarify it so uh, if you had to go through a perm labor certification for your particular green card application as long as things have not changed in the sense that your job has not significantly changed or your ge- geographical location has not significantly changed you don't need to go through a perm labor certification again now again if you change the company they may have to start it again or within the company you take an entirely different job in a uh, even if it's in the same location that job category may have a different prevailing wage so you will have to go through a perm labor certification again even if you have gone it uh, through it earlier so that is the clarification that i wanted to make now before we go any further let's look at the sponsor video extra Now this is their site. Now Exter makes lot of personal products such as wallets, card holders, and these wallets and card holders are specially made. They are either from leather or they are from the metal. And these are very minimalist card holders. They can hold up to seven cards, I think. They have the classic collection. They have the carbon fiber collection. There is also a limited edition collection. 
Now there are also technical sleeves. So if you are minimalistic, if you don't want to carry a wallet, there is also tech, tech sleeves and there are iPhone cases and so on and so forth. This is a German company and they have sent me some products to review and I can tell you that just by the feel of it, these are extremely high quality products. The classic collection has this parliament wallet which they had sent me in the black color and there is also a senate card holder that also they have sent me. The best feature of these wallets are there is a button at the bottom of the card holder which when you press the button it actually pulls out all the cards like a fan and you can select each card uh, just by looking at it. So there is no more fiddling into your wallet. Now if you use the link in the description which has my a code of wisdom trends you will get a discount on it so check out these extra products they are excellent so that's extra the sponsor of this video now another important question that i always get is l1 to h1b transformation so uh, as you know uh, the h1b is a visa that gives you a lot of flexibility is a specialized occupation visa that is given to about 85000 people every year and once you have gone through the lottery process you can always go through a cap exempt petition for the remainder of your life under certain cir uh, circumstances but you uh, and then with h1b comes benefits such as job transfers amendments uh, ex uh, unlimited exp extensions and so on and so forth so it becomes very easy to change jobs change careers when you are an h1b the same advantages unfortunately don't uh, are not applicable if you are an l1 l1 visa now there are certain other advantages for l1 so, uh, say for instance l1a typically qualifies for an eb1 category of green card which has uh, no backlog at this point of time so that is the biggest advantage if you are an l1a the spouses of l1 automatically get uh, authorization for work permit so that is another big advantage of l1a but there are some disadvantages if you come through l1a which is a bank blanket petition for uh, companies who have their headquarters out outside of the united states and have a subsidiary in the united states they may send their employees to work in the united states for a certain duration so l1a or l1 visa does not have any provision for transfer to another company so you are basically stuck with the same l1 sponsoring employer although you are you are able to get through an eb1 except if you are on l2 you may not qualify for uh, eb1c but on l1a you may qualify for eb1 but um, in, in either case if you are on l1 visa it is very difficult to change employers unless you go on an, on a different visa like an h1b visa now how do you do that now there are only two methods one is if you never had any h1b before if you never had uh, gone through the cap subject lottery in the past then there is no option but you will have to uh, get into a lottery while you are still on h1 submit an application in your uh, yearly quota for um, for h1b and get the h1b that way and then you can change your status from l1a to h1b so that is one method if the second method in if you had an h1b in the past uh, at any time and you were subject to cap then you have an uh, opportunity to change your status from l1 to h1b with, with cap exempt because you had an uh, cap subject petition in the past so that way now you don't have to wait until march or april to submit your petition into into another cap petition but you can easily just submit an h1 fresh h1p petition in premium processing and within two to three weeks you can get your h1b petition approved and now you want to change your status from h1 l1 to h1 so that is another way and if you want to change a job while you are on l1 this might be the best way to go for a job change uh, by doing an h1 now i just wanted to remind you if you have a particular situation if you're uh, and you need my opinion personal opinion like what i would do if i were in your case then do contact me on my patreon site that's the best way i can give you my recommendation if what i would do if i were in your situation 
Now this is a student. Now this is a summer season, and uh, new college admissions are in full swing. So people who are in India who have done their bachelors, many of them want to come to the United States to do their masters. So now is the time where you have already applied for a bunch of universities in the United States, and you, now you are getting your uh, results back regarding which university you are getting admission to. So typically, if you your score is high enough in GRE and things like that, you may be selected for multiple universities. Now, what are the methods? that you can do or what are what is the what is the process that you can use to select a university so it is a very important topic and a lot of uh, there is a lot of material out there a lot of people who plan to come to united states for student visa or on, on student visa have lots of colleagues that have made this transition in the past so there is a lot of knowledge out there now typically with the universities that you want to select should be selected on the basis of your interest so what are the topics and subjects that you are interested in that should be the criteria for selecting the university you could also select a universities where there is a high level of placement so there are some universities especially in the northeast in boston and there are lot many universities in the united states which are in higher rankings and the reason they are in the higher rankings is because they have a lot of good placements a lot of companies are interested in hiring the candidates from these universities if getting a best job is your primary objective then go for highly ranked universities but if you want to get your uh, get into a career of your choice go for the universities that have specialization in your topic of interest say for instance if you want a medical if you want to go into the medical school or if you want to go into the law now some of the uh, wharton or harvard or penn state these are top colleges for doing law or medical and the things like that so look at what your interest is and then pick an university other things that come to my mind are some people go with with uh, what is the job market around if job market was the concern you'd only be looking at universities in and around boston or in new york or san francisco because there are lots of jobs but that uh, that is not a good way to select a university there are a lot of other universities that are that may be in the mid midwest like purdue or urbana champaign or university of texas in in austin or there is georgia tech or uh, virginia tech those are those are the regions where there may not be as high level of job opportunities as in new york concept or san francisco but still those universities are very good and very very much in demand and employers are looking at candidates from these universities so your selection should be based on the the institution and your choice of study in my opinion so good luck with your selection of universities to all the students who are planning to come to the united states on student visa this year now another important question that i always get is uh, my priority date has been current in eb3 and it's also current in eb2 uh does it make sense for me to upgrade and i have covered this question quite many times in my past videos but i reiterate because this is a important time in this in this particular year in this last few months of this particular year until september there are a lot of uh, eb2 visas available as we all know so in this particular situation and only in this particular situation i would suggest even if your date is current in eb3 and you have been waiting for a long time in eb3 say for instance more than a year or year and half and your case has not moved you might want to consider moving to eb2 only during this particular time if at any other time i would have said don't bother upgrading just stay in eb3 because there is a visa number available for you but even in spite of that situation Uh, your case has been pending in this particular time frame and there are a lot of eb2 visa numbers available so it might not hurt to upgrade your case until september of this year now another important thing is all of you who were who have been stuck in eb3 for so long i really feel for you since uh, since since last year eb3 has not progressed at all and it is it is been very frustrating for a lot of people who have been current in the eb3 or who whose dates have retrogressed all of sudden and they have been stuck for the last year the dates have not moved forward at all now here's what i think there are a lot of people who have upgraded their cases from eb3 to eb2 in the last couple of months and they will continue to do so for the next couple of months so there is going to be some space or vacuum generated in eb3 what does this mean i speculate then in october of 2022 and upcoming months uh, right after that there will be a significant movement 
in EB3 for the backlog countries such as India and China. That is my speculation. They may jump by a year. Right now you can see the dates stuck at January of 2012. In October, my speculation is these dates may go directly to uh, January of 2013 or even further maybe middle of 2013 in the first one or two months in October or November that is just my guess because there has been a lot of weight in this EB3 category there have been a lot of upgrades now due to that there will be lesser demand uh, created and all of a sudden when the visa numbers become available in October there won't be enough applications to match those number of visas so what will USCIS do progress the dates now my speculation is in the month of October they may progress by a month and in the month of November they may progress by another six months to a year. So it is highly likely before the end of this uh, year like say December of 2022 EB3 uh, filing date chart dates may progress back to 2013 or 2014. That is just my guess. So be patient all of you who have been stuck in EB3 the, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Now another, another news that I wanted to share with you is that uh, it's in the news that US Embassy in India has started issuing the, uh, the visitor visas back again and uh, tourist visas in particular. So in the past uh, several years they had stopped issuing tourist visas. Now it seems that they have restarted issuing the tourist visas. So it's good news for a lot of people who have been waiting to visit US for tourism. Now there is there are a couple of alerts that USCIS is still sending out. One is regarding the medicals. If you haven't already submitted the medicals, do so proactively. If you are in the process of upgrading your petition using the interfile, do submit your medical right at the time of interfile. This will save some time on the part of USCIS and also uh, in issuing you an RFE and also on your part uh, to respond to that RFE and that way you can get your green card sooner. So keep in mind another USCIS is, uh, alert is that it is dedicated to attempting to use all available employment based green cards. We are working to uh, identify adjustment of status application with available immigrant visas that lack valid IF 693 form so again they keep talking about the 693 form which is medical which is one of the bottlenecks that USCIS is seeing in all of these valid applications that are documentarily complete and just waiting because there is no medical attached to it so if you haven't done so just go ahead and submit it proactively don't wait for USCIS to submit an RFE for you so that's really what I wanted to cover in this video. If you have any other topic of interest that you want me to cover in my upcoming videos, do leave them in the comment section below. And if you like the content of this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.